because it's funny. I read the reviews of the record and a lot of them are just like, if you take all the production away, they're just simple pop songs. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I write, man. I, I write pop songs with real messages. So hopefully that's my goal, you know, reach as many people as I can. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes back in Jacob of Kulik. How are you doing, Jacob? I'm good. How are you? I am well. You know, it's been a minute. Glad to see you here. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I hope you, your family, all your musical conspirators and collaborators are well. It's a tough time in the world. And, uh, you know, we've all been going through a lot of stuff collectively and individually. And I'd just like to make sure you're good as we begin this chat. I am good. Uh, it's been a lot of ups and downs recently, but, um, you know, like, like always you get through and you figure out healthy ways to do it. And, uh, that's, I feel like that's pretty much life. <laughs> so much. So we have to process and move forward, uh, no matter what we are faced and it is, it's tough. It's been tough. It's been a couple of years. We've spoken a few times over the years. I've gotten to see you live. Always a pleasure. Really dig the music. Love this new album. Everyone I know will die. The ominously titled, but keeping it real title as you do. And, uh, you know, I thought since we've done the origin story and we've done the how's it going and how's the tour interviews, I wanted to do something a little more interesting and pertinent, which is to do a little track by track analysis of the record. Any thoughts or feelings you want to share is fine. Anything you don't want to share to, you know, preserve some mystery for the listener, also fine. I always feel like these things are a good exercise and fun for the artist also, as opposed to the same bunch of questions you have probably been asked about this album already. Yeah, I actually really uh, prefer talking about the record because for some reason that's like the least asked question where they're like, you know, um, yeah, no, this, uh, this record, Oh, I also wanted to comment on, um, you know, being transparent and uh, letting the listener have their own take. I always like to talk about the songs just up and tell people what I was going through when I was writing it, because people can relate to that, but still put their own meaning to it, you know, uh, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so I have the seven track album. Necessities was the first one. Uh, that was basically me running and writing lyrics down randomly. And I was, I wanted to just get rid of everything that I've, I've ever owned and like restart. So that was like the start of the record. Um, before I go into the rest of the tracks too, this whole album was basically me being a caretaker to my partner, April, who was having uh, seizures and they had no idea why. And I was her caretaker because she basically was having multiple seizures at least once a month. So by the time she was almost recovered, she was back in the hospital. Um, and that's why I made the record called Everyone and Then Will Die, because I was just in the hospital all the time. And there was so much, obviously, there's not good health in the ER. So, <laughs> so I needed to write about that. So this whole record is based around that. Um, and yeah, she also has her story of that. And she does her own music, too. So but that was Necessities. The People I Know Don't Like Me is the one that isn't necessarily about the situation. That one's more just about being from a town that you don't feel like you belong in and you just feel like a complete outcast and they don't like you and you don't like them. And it's kind of like this, uh, you don't identify with who's around you. Um, I don't know if that's from like moving, like not being from there, that town originally, like my parents weren't necessarily from there originally. So maybe that made a difference, but I know a lot of people feel that way because it's like the best selling merch shirt that we've ever had. So <laughs> that's cool. Um, For Once in My Life was written with April and oh, and, and also all these are like co-written with either April, Kevin Eiserman, uh, or for this one, uh, I co-wrote it with this kid named Eric Paquette, super talented. Uh, he goes by youth year now, but um. For once in my life was totally, uh, it was right, it was during, it was during a part of my life where I wasn't sure if I was about to get divorced or not. And it was just like, can I get it right for once in my life? I feel like I do this wrong all the time kind of thing. Um, and that's what all of y'all in a quiet neighborhood, my last record was, it was just completely the divorce record. So this one was like another one out of necessity I needed to write it was very strange, but uh, all I see is red. As another one I wrote when I was running, 
complete panic attack. It was like in between seizures, not actual seizures, but like the month and another month. And I was just freaking out. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do here. Um, and I just, I was just literally having a panic attack, writing lyrics while running. <laughs> so it's that one. Don't think about me is definitely a spillover from yelling in a quiet neighborhood where that was more about my past partner. And also like, I relate to this subject with also April and other friends who have gone through breakups and they're like, I just hope that they're good. Uh, I hope you don't think about me at all. And, and that it, it's, it's a good thing, but you know, just makes the question of like, when you think about me, do you th think well or not? That's pretty much the theme of that. Uh, time to go was another, that one I wrote on an acoustic and it sounded very much like Kings of Leon and, and folky, which I might be going in that direction next. I don't know if I'm sticking to this alternative, but we'll see. I love the alternative too, but, uh, the acoustics calling me, but, um, I wrote it on an acoustic guitar and it was just pretty much reminiscing my childhood. And then the chorus is being like, I don't, I, I don't need to slow down or calm down. Like I just need to keep doing things because, I don't want to be that person. I always think of the people at shows, the people that are standing in the back that are ready to go home already. Like they're like, oh, it's the encore song. We better just stand in the back and get to the car quick. Or, you know, oh, it's the fourth quarter in the game or leaving early. So I use that analogy in that song. It's my favorite part of that song. And then the final track is Everyone in That Will Die, uh, which is pretty much me just being so fed up with the situation and realizing I have no control over it and deciding well you can either harp on this or you can be more positive so like it starts with like what a sick joke standing on a planet that's dying as fast as it's flying into oblivion <laughs> so it's, it sounds dark but by the time you get to the chorus it's kind of like everyone i know will die so you better make the best of it and say goodbye kiss good night and and view it as positively as you can because for me if i don't view it that way i won't be here so and i mean yeah, it's been a freaking difficult year with her health. It's been a difficult year with COVID. It's been difficult adjusting to, you know, the divorce. It's been difficult uh, in general. I'm, I'm turning 30 in April. Like, that's another freaking milestone. So, yeah, it's definitely been difficult. And I always write based off of those things. But I always try to turn it positive because I think it's the only thing that you can really do. Right on through the darkness, we glimpse the positivity in the future, hopeful, you know, self. Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing all that stuff. A lot of a lot of personal stuff. Best of luck to April and to you with that situation. Always difficult and especially neurology and the brain. A lot of unknowns. We still don't understand the whole brain, even the most the smartest, best doctors in the world. It is insane how much no one knows anything. And that was actually the source of like why everything was so anxiety ridden for me. Cause I was like, like basically like, like, so she's been seven months seizure free now, which is the longest she's been like, and hopefully that continues. And uh, this made me like religious and spiritual and superstitious and all kinds of fucking things. I never thought would re-enter my life, but yeah, like I was, every time it would happen, I would just like Google things and like, like, come on, there's gotta be a link here. It's gotta be something. And I realized there was one thing that was linking, which was that she was always ovulating. So we were like, okay, it could be hormonal. Like, let's just try birth control. And ever since she's done that, so we have no idea what the future will be yet, but we're hopeful. And I mean, her career is doing really well at the moment and I love producing her music as well. Uh, it definitely took me out of the driver's seat for my career for a little bit. I'm trying to regain that. So it's very interesting to see where I'm going to go next. But I felt good making a record that I didn't give a shit what anyone else thought about it. And I know I, I specifically wanted to make it alternative rock, not because necessarily it's just what was in, but it was like, I've listened to this music my whole life. I love this genre. And I wanted to just, I love picking something, being like, I know I can do that. Let's do that. You know? Because it's funny, I read the reviews of the record and a lot of them are just like, if you take all the production away, they're just simple pop songs. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I write, man. I, I write pop songs with real messages. So hopefully that's my goal, you know, reach as many people as I can. And pop music is the way to do that and the catchiest way to do that. But I want to write about real shit. I'm, I'm sick of like 
I'm sick of hearing music that's not about real shit. And it's it's still going that way. I'm waiting for the wave to come back, but I'm staying on this side, man. <laughs> there it is. You've always been exactly who you are, lyrically, as a performer and a writer. And I also found I felt that like alt rock punk thing in here too in a couple of tracks. And you know, a good song is a good song. It could be any genre. You could put any kind of take on the yeah. bare bones of a good, a well-made song can do yeah, anything. I mean Honestly, the process is always the same too, where like I'm writing, not always the same, but most of the time I have the lyric or the melody idea. So the song's done. Now it's just, how do you want to produce it? You can make it freaking reggae. You can make, you can make anything you want, you know, but you always try to stick to what your product is or what your brand is. Um, I've always been in and out with that, but I will say for this record specifically, I had no time to make a record. So because I was always in the hospital, always taking care of it. It was literally nuts. So I was like, I want to make a record. And Kevin Eiserman, who plays guitar with me on tour, friend of April's, a really good friend of mine now too, is a producer. And I was like, dude, if I send you like really rough demos, do you want to just add what you would do and send it back to me? And then I'll finish it. And that's how we got the record done. It was like, I was, I was like, all right, I have April had a seizure two weeks ago. I'm going to try to write a song right now for this week. Send it to Kevin. We're back in the hospital. All right, Kevin sent me the demo back. I have another song and I'm finishing the one that he sent me. It was like, because I really wanted to still do music, but I was like, we were debating. When you're in those situations, people don't realize you can't teach someone perspective. And that's really frustrating sometimes. But people don't realize that your health and I've heard people say this so many times, so it probably won't even come across as like important to you, but your health is so important. And when you don't have it, especially when it's debilitating and you need someone else to take care of you, you're just like, you're thankful that you're just waking up at some point. And I don't think either of us necessarily needed that, but it, it made us have an even greater perspective, but it makes you a little bit bitter towards people who aren't grateful or aren't they don't realize like how good they have it and they also don't realize that like a lot of people are suffering with things that you don't see every single day you know like april doesn't overshare it at all i barely talk about it we're not trying to i, I don't think that's the route to go either where you just go on to the metaverse and share it with everybody like that's all i don't think that's the solution either but i just wish people would internally actually feel grateful for everything that they have because there's so much that other people don't have and there's so much that you have that other people don't have that i mean for me too i, I wake up every day and it's difficult to i mean i have issues with mental health all the time i go i go in waves i feel like i'm worthless or point like everything like nothing matters no one gets it whatever from that all the way to the top of the world uh, that's the waves that it goes in but even on the days that i feel bad i can at least say i'm really grateful that i have x y and z and and i go through those lists every morning i force myself even if i don't feel good that morning like i said the last week or two that i've had has been rough for me um and you just have to i just wish that people would not give up and fold into themselves but instead try to express some type of gratitude um and you know that, that's that's the short of it <laughs> yeah yeah it's, you know i appreciate that and th again thank you for sharing so candidly all these things you know when people are in the thick of their drama and their their personal turmoil it's hard to kind of see clearly so but also you're right i think we hopefully after the last few years of the world we're not taking too much for granted anymore whatever it is and you know try to stay present it's hard we're all <laughs> it's like we're either running to or running from some drama personal or otherwise and uh there's also things chasing us at the same time demons etc so yeah. You know, I am I'm appreciative that you're able to share this stuff and I'm glad you're able to get it out in your music. And I always kind of thought you were going to move on to producing anyway. Some of I think our very first chat we were talking, I know you work audio engineering and you have these very finely tuned ears. I just assumed eventually you'd go on to produce many other artists and maybe, you know, 
be the kind of like producer collaborator to other people. That's which you exactly already have done some of do. That's exactly what I'm trying to do now. Yeah. Actually, um, we work with both me and April because she's a producer as well. But um, we work with artists um, where they come here or they'll Zoom. But most of the time they come here for two or three days. We record them. Me and April produce it. I'll mix it. I'll master it. And then we get the song pretty much done in three days. That's what we've been. That's the that's the right amount of time. It feels like for someone to come here and do that. But it's been really fun producing other people. Um, and yeah, I totally have always wanted to do it. Um, it. It's it gives me a different type of fulfillment than it does being an artist and I actually have been feeling more fulfilled producing other people and letting other people you know watching them achieve what they want to achieve through us is really really cool you know whereas like I I've done what I've wanted to do of course I want to keep making music of course I I, I mean who doesn't want a huge fan base who supports you and you can do arena tours right but uh, I I've, I've my childhood dream has been accomplished and that's a hard one to just keep going after that so the producing has helped me. And like I said, I'm trying to dive into what it is that I want to write next. I want to be indulgent. I want to, I, I want to just really sit down with an acoustic guitar, write how I actually feel now that I'm not in this panic, manic, crazy thing of whatever last year was. So we'll see. Well, you know, continued success with that on, the, on that front, of course, you know, fingers crossed and and all that. And yeah, of course, you know, this record is brand new, so I'm certainly not rushing you to put out another one, but it'd be very interesting <laughs> to see, you know, what where the balance strikes next. Um, and of course, I see you with a row of guitars behind you and one over your shoulder. Uh, do you have a favorite in the room there? If you had to pick one to run out of the house in a fire? Not that I'm rooting for that. No, no, it's definitely the Taylor, um, <clears throat> which isn't even on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> the Taylor, we were we were just on a little mini tour, so it's actually downstairs. But I, I have a Taylor 314 C. It's like the first expensive guitar I ever bought. I toured with Sleeping with Sirens with it for the acoustic tour. It's a lot of memories in that one. It sounds really I record everything with that usually. I used the Fender Acoustic Sonic as well. It's also a really good guitar. Uh they sent me that, which was like so fucking nice of them. But um I like that, but that's for live. I, I can also do it for writing, but for recording purposes, it's a, uh, it's a hybrid of an electric and an acoustic. So I'm not, I'm not sure as an engineer what to do with it yet. It's not necessarily the guitar's fault, but definitely the Taylor, definitely the Taylor. There you go. There you go. Well, yeah, man. Uh, congratulations on this. Thanks. You know, first of all, just glad you're here. It is more than okay not to be okay. It is very brave to put yourself out there and say a lot of these things are on fire and I'm trying to make sense of it all as an artist, as a person in this world, uh, you know, but it seems like the arrow continues to move up for you, which I'm really glad to see having followed you from a while back now. And, uh, you know, all the best to you, best of success and, and luck and health to April, of course. And yeah, just keep doing what you do, man. We'll be here following. We love these, these songs. And, uh, you know, like I said, from tragedy and pain and pressure, at least you have this art that you can share that maybe it will help somebody else. Definitely. I'm looking forward to a record that maybe doesn't stem from that. We'll see what that cool record sounds like. I haven't had it yet, <laughs> but if I can find a, a little, a little moment, you know, for it to not come from that, it would be really, really nice. So we'll see, but yeah, I mean, that's why I always, I started writing for that reason. So it's never, it's never, that's the one thing that's been consistent, you know, so I'll keep writing. Thank you for the comments on the record. I hope everybody listens to it and enjoys it. And yeah, there's definitely a lot tucked in there so indeed thanks for hanging with ghost cult and always supporting us back we appreciate you absolutely man